All right, we're getting a baby girl today. Looks like we're gonna be going to the hospital, pick her up. Same hospital that I picked up baby, oh, baby J. Um, let's get this thing started. <laughs> it's, it's a whirlwind over here. Let's go. Okay, so I got a call from the county today. I got my boy here, baby R, um, and I just got a actually a message from someone who follows me on Instagram. His name is Hector. Shout out to Hector um, about a placement today and baby girl, newborn from the hospital. And um, I reached out to that worker because he couldn't take her, so he referred me. I reached out to that worker, and let me find my keys real quick. There we go. And um, she, we worked out all the details, and it's, I'd say it's 95% there that I'll be, be, be uh, getting placed with the baby girl. And um, we'll see how it goes. Um, but y'all know how it is. You guys know how it is. There's actually a baby that I was supposed to get. She was six days old and I never ended up getting her over last weekend. I didn't even share about it because it's just like this rat race sometimes. But um, we'll see how it goes. I'm waiting on the last call. I spoke with the social worker, no, the placement worker and I spoke with her supervisor who was placing this child. Will you see yourself in the mirror? Yeah. He always sees himself there and he smiles and stuff. Um, yeah, I spoke with the, 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 T, the placement worker and then I also spoke with her supervisor who's placing this child. And everything seems good to go. So I'll keep you posted with the next, next information I find out. Ooh, ooh. Okay. Okay, everything is confirmed. We are going to pick up this little girl. Um, she is five days old. I just dropped baby R off at babysitter. I don't like to bring uh, the babies that I have to the hospital because I really want to focus, concentrate, get um, ask the nurses questions, get everything about paperwork and all that jazz. Um, because that's really important. Uh, what else, what else, what else? And then I can just focus and meet her for the first time. Then I'm gonna head back home um, and pick up a second car seat because I have ours car seat, but I forgot the second car seat. So I'm gonna pick her up, go back home, get the car seat, come back to pick up R, and then we're gonna go to Target. I need to buy some baby girl stuff because I've never had a baby girl. So um, I'm not gonna buy too many like outfits because she's five days old. Like she's gonna be in onesies and little like bodysuits. It's nothing insane. But once she's a little bit older, a month, two months, I'll you know be focusing more on like get little girl outfits and stuff. We are here at the hospital, and I'm waiting to jaywalk across the street here to go pick pick her up. So. I'm gonna go in there. I'm required to take two forms of ID. I got my passport and then obviously my driver's license. And um, I got my orange outfit on. Cause that's what I felt like wearing today and it's 75 degrees out. Um, yeah, so I had to bring two forms of ID, my COVID vaccination, get vaccinated um, and boosted and um, I don't have a mask, but I'm sure they'll have a mask in there for me. And I go meet her, pick her up. I always want to, so if you're fostering and you're picking up a baby from the hospital, get as much paperwork as possible. Ask as many questions as possible about the child because you don't know what they're going to tell you with the county and stuff like that. So you want to like get as much as you can from the nurses. Whew, I'm tired. So that way you know, like, because because when I'm going to pediatricians, you know, let's say the baby's drug exposed or something, 
they ask these questions like, oh, what drugs or what was the, the prior, you know, their life like prior to you so that they can make good sound like medical decisions for that child. That's why when I go pick up a baby from the hospital, like, I ask all the questions I can possibly think of. Okay, I'm gonna go inside. No cameras inside. Let's go. Okay, so, oh, we are, I just saw her and legitimately she's beautiful. Like no joke, she's beautiful. Um, I don't know what that is. Uh, so I have to go to the pharmacy and pick up a medication for her. So I'm walking there, what is this? I had to go into the NICU and there wasn't a lot of babies in there, which is nice because I was just like, oh, I don't want to see a bunch of grieving families and it would be really sad. But I gotta walk to this other building, get this permit, get this medication, and then uh, walk, and then go back and pick her up, and then we go home. Um, oh, do you guys know this is my third time having two babies at once, and baby R is um, has been there for two of them. It's exciting. Okay, I'm going in the building. I gotta go. Here she comes. Here she is. So exciting. It's so exciting. <laughs> I love it. Oh, baby girl. Okay, that's my car right there. Look at her. She's in there. Oh my god. <laughs> so excited. Here we are. So amazing I just I took this picture on Instagram I'll put it on the screen and it's just like so beautiful to think about like the imagery of how far R has come like he was this well not this little he was two months when I got him she's five days old but he was still so tiny and he needed all the nurturing and love and all of that jazz that you know a tiny baby needs and now it's like look at him he's just like playing and sitting and entertaining himself it's just so beautiful just like to think about how far he's come how far I've come how far he and I have come together and now like this little girl just like I get to nurture and love her it's so beautiful um, so here's the plan of action for the night plan of action is to, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna swaddle her up now, put her in the bassinet, and then I'm going to get her a bath um, real quick, get him to bed. It's like eight o'clock, let me see. It's 8.15, mister, way past your bedtime. Um, get him to bed and then I will I just fed her a little bit I'm gonna then I'm gonna finish feeding her and swaddle her up and then she'll be good she'll probably sleep for another three hours then I will eat because I eat last um, and then I'll just you know every three hours I gotta feed her okay um, oh and th no then I'm gonna probably while I'm eating some mac and cheese I'll do a uh, YouTube live I'm going to be doing tonight. It's going to be pretty late, so, but I want to do it. Yeah. It's 11.15 p.m. I'm very tired. And honestly, I'm not, I don't know why I'm so tired. Like, maybe it's from not eating much today. Come on, you gotta eat. 
Um, like, R was with a sitter most of the day. She wasn't really much, like, energy today. Other than, like, going to the hospital and, like, I guess that's exciting and you don't know what you're walking into. Come on. So that, I'm sure that um, kind of just takes your energy and zaps it. But it's 11.15 p.m. and she... They said she drinks two ounces, but... I don't see her doing that in one sitting. She does about an ounce and then she kind of falls asleep. She gets really tired. That's why I have all the lights on. And also like if you like kind of tap their feet, um, it'll kind of wake them up because obviously they fall asleep as they're eating, which makes it very difficult because I'm tired. <laughs> But um, that's kind of it for now. So we got 11, 15, 12, 15, 1, 15. I'll be up at 2, 15, 3, 4, 5, 15. God. <laughs> oh, it's okay though. She's worth it. They're all worth it. You guys are all worth it. She is brand new. She's still in that like fetus position where she's all crunched up. She hasn't even, she hasn't stretched once. It's hard to like, you know, pull her arms up. Like, um, it, what is the word I'm looking for? And make their arms longer, like extend them. Extend their arms. Uh, we got about an ounce. I think she needs a break, so. guys okay that's it guys <laughs> that's it for now I'm exhausted peace out